you had an interesting take on dating apps. You're only going to get success on a dating app if you're a guy, if you're very handsome. Women are getting an abundance of, she had like 1500 notifications and I was scrolling looking at all the likes <laughs> and it, the app kept shutting down. Because <laughs> there were so many, I was like, how many get out? Oh they would just gosh. shut down and shut down. I had this many likes. Oh my God, I feel like the second coming of Jesus Christ. But so there's this huge disparity with, that's happening on dating apps. I think it's only going to get worse. All right, guys, we are back. Someone I've talked to online for like eight years, but we're finally meeting right now, Ryan. Love, live, serve. How's it going, my man? I'm happy to be here. Appreciate you inviting me. Dude, it's been cool to see your come up because I remember when you were in uh, Philly, you were at about a million, right? Yeah, I think we had about a, maybe one, 1. 1.7 million subscribers at that point. And now you're at eight. Yeah, it doesn't, it's never enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> I always want to hit new milestones, but yeah, it's been nice to, uh, keep going i feel happy at where i'm in my career so yeah, yeah dude and even your secondary channels are at like a million too i'm like god damn that's correct and that one almost that saved me that other channel because by doing something different it allowed me to expand what i do so it's not just skits every day and wake up and do a skit it's like i get to just shoot the shit with my friends and hang yeah. out and shoot vlogs so I'm grateful that we even set that up. Yeah, it's a different vibe, right? Because I noticed with the skit channels, it's a lot of work, right? Yeah, it is. And especially as I've gotten older, I've realized I can't do it forever. Like there's, uh, before I was like, let's do a skit on this. And let's do a skit on this. When right. I was 18 years old, I could just crank stuff out. And now I'm like, man, <laughs> I don't have it in me to want to be doing stuff like that. Once so. the bag started coming in, the, the drive died a little bit, huh? <laughs> it's It's... Not necessarily that, but it, uh, you don't feel compelled, like something that might've been funny to me then isn't funny to me now. Right. And, uh, the location I was at with college kids and it was hip and fun to do that. And my interests have changed and my habits have changed. And then when you get more on your plate, uh, you want to allocate your time differently. So before right. it was do a score assignment and then let's make a skit. But now it's this meeting, this call, the the Sean Kelly interview at this time. <laughs> so yeah, there's just more on my plate. But you're on a schedule. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to do everything I I enjoy doing. Yeah, so. I feel that, and I feel like what's funny changes so fast these days on on social media, right? What's funny one week isn't funny the next week. That's a fact. And I'll look back at most of my videos and be like, "Bruh, I can't watch this shit." <laughs> yeah. But at the time, it was all the rage, and I thought, "Oh, we're just having, we're just the funniest." But that's so true, dude. Yeah, because I feel like the pranks used to be hot back in the day, right? Man, the YouTube landscape in general changed. Like you just said, things that that are funny change so rapidly, and the landscape then versus now pranks. Before there was a prank era, and then it sort of resurfaced and reincarnated in a different form. Yeah, with the mic'd up thing as opposed to the sort of uh f far away prank now they just hold the camera in your face and, pr and prank you <laughs> sneak up <laughs> oh what's that neon 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 yeah it's the i don't know the, the term of the people that do that whether it be streamers or uh the mic'd up cult of pranksters it's not even a prank anymore it's just <laughs> i'm just gonna film you and disrupt you and your employees at your day job and it's my prank and then he has five bodyguards around him so you can't even do <laughs> good times though yeah um not something I I do, but yeah, it's one way to do it. How much like like in terms of making one viral video, like how much hours would you say on average goes into it? Well, a viral video specifically, I don't think I could even tell you. Here's how to make a viral video, but it can really be our our biggest hits in terms of videos were very simple, hmm. whether it be the music in the library. I mean, there's a lot of videos that we had do very well, but usually the more simple it is and the easier to, it is to digest, hmm. those tend to do the best. Wow. Whereas my most thought out, all right, this is going to be the strategic blow and here's all the lines and everything. Those perform decently, but the simple a chill in the air leaves falling to the ground and football every weekend that's what fall is about you can make each weekend even more exciting by getting into the action with my partners at DraftKings, the number one place to bet on touchdowns and right now all new customers who bet five dollars will instantly get 200 in bonus bets so download the DraftKings sportsbook app and sign up using my promo code 
DSH, the crown is yours. That's $200 in bonus bets instantly. Stay in on the action. Use your $200 in bonus bets to bet anytime touchdowns on DraftKings. DraftKings is the best place to bet touchdowns. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings, daily fantasy, and have the shot to win cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use my promo code DSH and bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code DSH. Hard-hitting concepts that are, like I said, it's easy for the audience to understand what's going on. Those perform the best, and it can be one afternoon. And I might even think of something the same day, and then we go out and film it. And then that's it. Wow. And it does great. So you can never protect, pre- predict it all the time. Interesting. Yeah, I guess it's more relatable. But then you see videos like Mr. Beast where he spends like a mill. And I see that. And a lot of people have copied that formula of, okay, super, like super highly produced and uh, high budget, high energy, high that. And I've chosen to not do that route what? because I – like having there be a more level of authenticity in the videos as opposed to, and I'm this person today and this is totally (laughs) fake and contrived and I'm just doing this for clicks and all my viewers are three years old. I cannot wake up every day and do that. Yeah. So uh, I would rather find something that I think is funny that I think, okay, this could get some views and some laughs and I could get enjoyment out of making it. I'll do that. I don't need the 20 million of video views of video. I don't need that. I feel that I would enjoy it, but I would go crazy. No, you saw what happened with Logan and Jake. I mean, they they <laughs> did it for like a year or two and they couldn't take it anymore. It's a black hole, the the views thing. It, once you get some, yeah, I used to see 40K views and think like, oh my God, I'm going viral. <laughs> 40 views. And it once you get 40, then you need 100. And now I need a 150 a video. Now mm-hmm. I need 500K a video. So there's no end. There's no end to it. But I've reached a point where I've gotten a whole bunch before and I've gotten like, oh, not that many. And I'm actually, I feel okay. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm enough still. Like, I won't disintegrate if I don't get a trillion views. Of yeah, video. that's a good mindset. And it takes takes some uh, some deep thought to get there, I think. Because it's easy to fall into that trap of, oh, I didn't hit this amount of views. I'm deleting the video or something. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it does still affect me here and there. But it's something that I will just inevitably have to deal with and get over. Yeah. Because you will not be hot forever. You will not be the most viral sensation forever. There's going to be a new upcoming trend that's going to be the thing. And yeah, it's, you have to have a sort of, I don't know, confidence in yourself to be okay with not being number one all the time. Yeah. I like talking to vets in this space because in your space, the content creation space, people don't make it past year two. Mm. You know what I mean? It's very rare to see guys stick around for as long as you have. And I, I appreciate you saying that. I, I I never think of myself as some sort of genius or like, yeah, I'm a social media expert and here's how to g- go viral and stay in the space for a long time. But I can only theorize that I, Noah and I have lasted so long in the space because we did it from a genuine place of enjoying creating videos. Nowadays, you can go, like I just said, you can go on a channel and it's all fake, contrived, uh, like... Uh, what's the word? Overly produced videos for the sole purpose of making money. Right. Whereas it's only ever been me and Noah goofing off with a camera. Mm. And because we genuinely enjoy that, we've been able to go for damn near eight, nine years. And I think people people have a sixth sense for authenticity so they can see it through the camera like, oh, these guys are actually just chill. And <laughs> they relate to it as opposed to the you putting on a no shade to Blippy, the child's content creator, but <laughs> you know, there's there's some Blippies that don't make content for kids where it's like you're fake. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's what made us last so long was just enjoying it, consistency, and and being true to ourselves. I love that. I was on your YouTube. I saw a video of like a week or two ago. You were with a girl that could see ghosts. Oh yes. What was your takeaway from that? <laughs> that was fun. Random girl that I met. And she could, I was sitting, I was, we went to Target together just randomly. And I was like, oh, tell me about yourself. And she said, oh, well, something other. 
And I was like, anything interesting or crazy? She's like, oh, I can see ghosts and dead people. <laughs> and I was like, you didn't want to start with that when we <laughs> met? And yeah, she ended up, we ended up, I was like, this is crazy. I got to put you on my YouTube channel. Yeah. I'm a YouTuber. You do, you see ghosts. And she didn't even want to do it. And I was like, come on, dude. And she eventually did. And before the, I think this was after the video, actually. She sat there with Rob and Noah and started listing out family details that aren't public information. Like you could probably look up someone's name or something. Yeah. But she started naming stuff. And I was like, oh, she's the real deal. Wow. So she's just some sort of medium that I just randomly met. Interesting. And, uh, I think it was Instagram. But so you met her on IG and took her to Target. Yeah, it was it was the first. It was like mandatory. I was like, yeah, meet up, let's go to Target, and that's it. that's a safe spot for a date actually because girls love Target. Mm -hmm. Then they go get there, buy something they don't need, then they're having a good time. But I I don't know why we went to Target. I guess I'm just not a gentleman. But well, we went there and I still talk. I still talk to her. But yeah, she was she was cool. Okay. People were like, this is fake. This is, she just looked it up, and I was like. Brother, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, if she's naming family members that aren't public, I mean, that's that's probably not a coincidence. Yeah, it was the type of stuff where you couldn't convince someone even if you tried. We had a hypnotist on yeah. our channel before who hypnotized people that we were with. And everyone's like, they're acting. This is an act. And I'm like, man, if only you were there, you could have seen it was the realest. He thing. got you? He didn't get me. Okay. Because I'm too in my head. <laughs> so my subconscious didn't let him hypnotize me. Yeah, that happened to me too. I tried it. It didn't work. It says, see, when you're like a big thinker and a genius, it just, <laughs> it, it's impossible to get hypnotized. You've been going on a little uh, dating podcast around SC, huh? <laughs> we got to talk about that. I have um, dating. I mean, I've been doing a few little, actually later today, I've got a little dating, you know, them Jubilee type videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing some of those. I got, I got a crazy story, but tell yours first. <laughs> I was just going to say. I love doing them. I've actually met so many people and girls to be in videos and networking opportunities. And it's been a blast. So nice. This year or in the last sort of the latter end of last year, I wanted to just put myself out there more. Tell you. I live in LA and why not <laughs> do things like this place has a lot to offer. So yeah, why not? take full advantage of it. I got yeah. your story. Dude. So I was super pumped. This was before the podcast. So I wasn't pulling any views. Um, cause I was more low key, you know, focused on making a bag and I get invited to go on a Jubilee video. So I'm like, hell yeah, dude, I'm in Vegas. I fly out for that. I pull up to the studio. So the whole video was three people that are homeless and then three people that are making top 1% income. Okay. And then we would just, she would read out a thing and we would sit down if we agree with it. Have you seen those? I've seen those. Yes. Yeah. So we filmed the whole thing halfway through one of the homeless people, a knife falls out of their pocket. Oh God. And the producer's like, you can't have weapons on set. And the, I think it was a girl. Um, she was like, no, I need this. I'm homeless. Like someone could attack me. So they cut the whole episode. Like it never <laughs> aired. And it, it would have went so viral. Like I was pretty disappointed actually. And that was a real homeless person. Yeah. And I can't blame her. It's a shame you even flew out there. I know. I flew out and everything. If you're watching this Jubilee, give me a second chance because I'm ready. <laughs> I'm, I, let, me re I, let me reach out to them because I think I know somebody there that can maybe get you on another one. <laughs> I'm down, bro. Because those are fun to film, actually. It's interesting seeing different perspectives. Bro, they're fun to Jubilee. And all the React video, all the React channels react to Jubilee. Yep. And it's, yeah, just the few that I've been on. Which one did you go on? I went on a few. I went on ranking people by least expensive outfit to most expensive okay and then i i did another one where it was blind dating girls based on their phone i did that one recently oh so you look through their phone so i went learn through their phones and stuff got it that was enough that was the super recent one so that was fun and then i eliminated the cutest girl like first <laughs> and then the comments this guy's a red flag I'm just like <laughs> but they're fun i like you yeah, can't yeah help but have a blast when you're doing them absolutely so i want to go back and do more so dating on east coast versus west coast what's been some things you've noticed there hmm i i actually don't even think i have much of a frame of reference for dating on the east coast because when i was in college i don't even think i was on any apps or anything and i just was at drexel dating whatever girls were sort of in that yeah college community but in la it's steep competition. Right. Like, 
any and every girl is being hit up by the most successful, handsome, wealthy men ever. <laughs> uh, and so I've become sort of a, uh, you know, the saying, it's like big fish in a small pond. And I'm just a little guppy out here. Wow. So some girls would be like, oh, you probably get so many girls. And I'm like, where are they at? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, especially because I don't do bars, clubs, parties, and that's where you can meet people organically and stuff. Right. Online, it's if you're doing sort of an online Instagram thing, it, it's very difficult. So I, to answer your question, I would argue that East Coast might be a bit, you, you might get more luck if you're dating on the East Coast. Now, maybe not Miami and New York City, but right. other big cities might, you might be a bit more lucky. I have noticed though in Jersey where I'm from, people don't give a about your followers in Jersey. Mm. Like it's just like a kind of reserved state, family oriented. You know, it's a, I hear that often too. If I meet a girl, one of the first things that they like to say is, and by the way, I don't give a damn about your followers. <laughs> and I'm like, no one's talking about followers right now yeah. <laughs> except for you. But I, I think what people care about isn't the number on the screen. But if, if a girl can see that in person, people come up to you or like it's real world sort of fame and not numerical on a screen right, or right. subscriber count or something, then they start to be like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I 100% utilize that to the best of my ability. <laughs> if I'm talking to a new girl, I go to somewhere where I know I'm going to get recognized and then the person comes up, right on, can we get a picture? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. And then I hand the girl the phone, would you mind taking the <laughs> photo for us? And then they take it. And then she's like, oh my God, does that happen often? I'm like, eh, it was, Brilliant. It's just how it goes. I don't know. Little things it. like that. Yeah, that's that's smart, man. Putting yourself in a good spot there. Mm. Um, yeah, that happens in certain cities for you, I bet. What, what's like your biggest audience, you say? Is it LA? Um, I would... I think so. Actually, when I go to Maryland, every time I go to Maryland, I seem to get a lot of- Maryland? Is uh -huh. that where you're from? That's where I'm from. Oh, got it. So I guess it does make sense. But really, any place where there's a large group of people, specifically high school or college age males, they tend to recognize me the most. Right. And it's a blessing. I would not trade it for anything. It's a- Great and that, feeling. that's the power of YouTube, right? Because there's people with tens of millions on TikTok. Mm -hmm. They're not getting recognized. You know what I mean? Not yes. some of them are, but like other than Bryce Hall and maybe five others, mm -hmm. I can't name TikTokers. That's true. I, I think even fame these days is so diluted where everyone's famous. Everyone has 100K followers and I can't keep up with who you go on the Snapchat Explorer thing and it's like random ass. Yeah, people I don't know anyone on Snapchat Explorer <laughs> who, are, <laughs> who are famous. I'm just, I was just looking on there because we were talking about doing a Snapchat thing and I'm looking at these people. I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> uh, it's not what it used to be back in, the, back in the day. It was like Britney Spears was the big celebrity and the celebrities, it was like they were agreed upon celebrities right. where everyone knows that. I don't know, The Rock or the biggest movie star, I don't know. Megan Fox was a big Megan one. Fox. Nowadays, I'm famous to this cohort of people, and I'm an absolute nobody to this many people. Right. And that's a, it's a crazy concept. It's a cool balance, though, because we're – we could go to places and be normal, but mm -hmm. also if we go to certain places, you know, we got we got some fans there. It, exactly. And that's what I do. I, I'm like, okay. I, and I, I don't think I could even handle – being a Billie Eilish level of fame, an Ice Spice level of fame. I don't think I would even want that. Most people seem to hate it, dude. <laughs> you see their interviews about it and they're like, get the f away from me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you can't do anything at that point. And people claim they want things until they get it. And then... <laughs> Absolutely. Man. Going back to uh, dating real quick. You had an interesting take on dating apps. Mm. I'd love for you to explain your take on dating apps. Um, and where did you, I think it was on, was it on whatever podcast or was it on another one? I mean, it, dating apps specifically, it's, I have a lot of takes on dating apps. I could probably list off a few, but I've noticed that if you're, let's say, and I've looked at girls who I've been speaking to, I've looked at their phones or dating apps that they're on, man, it's. It's almost, if you're a 
regular guy or below average guy. A dating app is this this it's this dark abyss where you're not really going to get much success, and it's on, you're only going to get success on a dating app if you're a guy if you're very handsome. Mm. Uh, and we tested these things out on our YouTube channel, uh, and oh yeah, I saw that video. The results are crazy. Where an average guy, decent guy, maybe gets one like or something. I mean, you can go online and type in like man Tinder experiment. I I don't even have to be the one to be the spokesperson for mm-hmm. it, but yeah, men are really losing out when it comes to dating apps, and then women are getting an abundance of things. I, I looked at one girl's thing she had like 1500 notifications and i was scrolling looking at all the likes <laughs> and it, the app kept shutting down because there were so many i was like how many get out oh and we just gosh. shut down and shut down and i'm like if i if i had this many likes oh my god i'd feel like the second coming of jesus christ it'd be nuts yeah. but so there's this huge disparity was that's happening on dating apps and I, don't, I think it's only going to get worse. <laughs> I feel that. There's two apps that I've heard it's a bit of a more level playing field. One of them is Raya. Mm. I'm not sure if you're on there. And then uh, what's that Sugar Daddy one? Oh, I forget the name. But Sugar Daddy. Um, I only Sugar Daddy ones. Are Seeking a Seeking Ar- Ar- Yeah. Okay. So, so I've heard if you're a guy there, they verify your income. Mm. So you have to prove you're making X amount. So oh, my wow. one friend on there was making a million a year. So he was showing me his inbox. I mean, hundreds of girls. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then that one's a tricky one because then the girls are looking for, oh, he makes a million. Then let me get some, pay for me, pay for my lifestyle. Yeah, that's more of a materialistic relationship. <laughs> it's not really dating, yeah. But it can be a good, like I said, if you're a handsome guy, you, it's, it, it could work for you. But man, even these days, you can't even, what do you, maybe I could ask you this, uh, what would someone do if they don't want to use a dating app mm. and they don't drink, smoke, and go to clubs and bars? How could you possibly meet someone? Because if you start going up to random people on the street, you know, girls are apprehensive and it's like, right. uh, don't talk to me. It's kind of, I, I, don't, I don't know what you would do. As a, <laughs> as a guy, it's tough. So if I was a girl, I would go to business conferences. Mm. I would go to the VIP section. All those dudes are ballers, man. Mm. And no, there's no girls there at conferences. There's like five girls and there's like a thousand dudes. Oh, that's true. So uh, for guys though, <laughs> you got to have some game these days if you don't have money. Yeah, it's, it's you need game. You need, you got to max out your stats as best you can. Yeah. Because the, the competition's getting, I mean, with the globalized dating market. It's tough. It's tough. The winners keep winning and then the losers are losing and they're losing bad. Yeah. I'm glad I never had to deal with it. Honestly, I've been with the same girl for six years. And that is a blessing. But yeah, no, <laughs> it truly is. But I see all my single friends just struggling, man. Vegas and LA, I heard it's a tough dating market. And it makes you think like uh, tapping out of the game. A lot of dudes are quitting dating because what's the point? Why would I even, I mean, nowadays you can hop on a VR and have a digital girlfriend. <laughs> uh, not that I would do that, but <laughs> there's a lot of men that are. Yeah. And they're having these parasocial relationships online. I don't know, but I think I'm going to, my goal would be to have a wife and kids and a beautiful nuclear family. That's what my goal is, but you got to know when to leave the poker table and find a good one. Yep. But it's not easy. Not easy. I saw you did a collab with Sneeko. Did any of his ideologies resonate with you? Sneeko, um, he's been a supporter. I, me- I remember I met him and he was a, he had recognized me and he knew who I was. And I was like, oh, dude, I love your videos. This is back when he was doing super intellectual, deep videos. I think Sneeko and I definitely probably have a, a lot of similar views. but And the way we choose to express them might be different. But he, he's always been a solid guy. And nice. I, I think both of us believe in, you know, traditional values. And, I mean traditional values nowadays is like a taboo crazy thing <laughs> to believe in but he's so he and i get along very well that's cool so yeah i was upset when he got banned same with fresh and fit i know you went on their show mm-hmm. when both of those guys got banned it was were you scared at all this is something i actually i could talk about this forever but it is spooky when you start to see someone say something that's objectively true or they're speaking an actual fact, but that fact is sort of 
unpleasant or doesn't sound nice or doesn't appease people's feelings. Right. And then they take you out. And then I'm like, well, damn, what can you say? Yeah. What, what can you do? And I've, I grapple with this concept all the time because I've got plenty of hot takes and plenty of things that I would say are facts. But I, someone told me this where you, if you want to give people medicine, you got to mix in Kool-Aid with it. Otherwise, they're not going to take it. The same way you go when you, when you give your dog medicine, you got to put it in some cheese or some deli meat. Right. To, right. Otherwise, they're gonna they're like gonna turn their nose about it. And I think that's how most people are with pieces of information. And I and I'm I'm like loud and like out there and say stuff unfiltered. And I've had to think about that, seeing Fresh and Fit and other people mm -hmm. get wiped out. And I'm like. You wipe out these guys for saying this, but then I see a lot of stuff on the platform that I wouldn't say is on the up and up and good <laughs> and wholesome, and that's being pushed to kids. I'm like, yeah, man. no, it is a little scary, man. I just got my first strike. I was like, damn, really? Yeah, dude. And what was it for? <laughs> we <laughs> can't even speak on it. I mean, we probably can't speak on it. It was about the vaccine, honestly. Mm. Yeah, so I'm not talking about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's the thing. You're not allowed to speculate about anything or. What's the point of free speech? It's free speech until you say something that they don't like and then no more of that. Yeah. So it's pretty nuts, dude. But I've, I've decided that, hey, if I'm going to be on these platforms, there are rules. And it's like a sad sort of gut punch where, yeah, you can't say I do have to bite my tongue. And I, I'm not rich enough, big enough yeah. to say, yeah, F, F the corporate system. I'll say whatever I want. Not me. I'll play the rules if for I now. To for now, unless Rumble and Kick blows up. For now, we're on the main ones. Exactly. And I've also felt recently that even by saying a bunch of true stuff and trying to quote unquote wake people up, at a certain point, is it even worth it? And and maybe I will pose that question to you. You're a very smart guy. I'm sure you've heard a lot of good concepts and theories and conspiracy yeah, yeah. theories and things that you can't say. Do you feel like it's important to educate people and wake them up? Or is it sort of like a heavy man for himself? If you, if you know, you know, but I'm not going to try. Yeah. To Great question. dude. <laughs> that might be the best question I've ever been asked. I think it's important to present the information and then people form their own opinions. Mm. So when I, as a podcast host, I have on both sides, I'll have on Republicans, Democrats, you form your opinion from there. I'm going to be objective as much as possible. Mm. Even though I do lean to the right, I'm going to be objective. And we'll see what happens. But I think when you just cut off one side completely, mm -hmm. obviously people are going to believe the other side. That's the only side they're hearing. Yep. You know what I mean? That's so true. And uh, I'm sure you're a similar way. Like, I don't care to be right about something where this is my point of view and this is the right way. I'm a truth seeker. So if someone can present me with information... And just like disprove me or disprove my point, then I'm like, so be it. Yeah. But nobody's these days, they're not willing to say I'm wrong or you know what? There is a chance that I could be wrong about this. Could you tell me more information? <laughs> no one says that. No one says that. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The, the human and the human brain will find ways to prove itself right. Despite facts or any in, input or anything. And that's where I go back to the question I asked, which is, why even try you could destroy your whole career and get blacklisted and everything yeah. because you were trying to help people but those people don't even want your help they don't even want to be yep alex jones i mean dude got wiped financially on social media it's just everywhere so these days and that's a big thing i'm grappling with this year as i expand and grow and learn more about uh the world in general i'm just thinking hmm what are my beliefs what what things can I say? What things can't I say? Uh, how do I present information? Hmm. I've got a lot of people looking up to me. What should I say? What What do I want to say but can't? Right. How do I present information in a responsible way that I can still keep my job but but not be fake? But I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And you got a huge platform and a huge podcast. So when it comes to the podcast, is there any guests that you would not have on ever, like Donald Trump or someone like that? You know. I would personally, I love hearing from all types of people, but you're right. Even by having someone on, you'll be labeled something. If I have someone on like a, I don't know, Donald Trump or any political person. Oh, didn't know this was a right wing extremist <laughs> channel. And you'll get that. If yeah. I say something that's 
a traditional value or a red pill ideology. These guys have just gone red pill, and it's sad to see. Um, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that question. I think I'd have to be very strategic with the people that we bring on. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Ryan, it's been a blast, man. Anything you're working on right now? Anything you're trying to promote before we wrap up? Mm, just follow... Uh, love live serve on youtube and follow strawberry park on youtube those are my two channels perfect we'll link it in the video thanks so much for coming on man appreciate you for having me thank yes, you yes sir thanks for watching guys as always and i'll see you next time